Sometimes I feel invisible. Sometimes I can't relate to what I'm being taught in school. I feel like students and staff don't understand me or want to understand what I go through. Sometimes I feel judged on the color of my skin and I have to act a certain way to make sure that people don't view me in a negative way. There's no sense of community here. Where do we belong? While African American black students make up only 2.1% of the student population, they are overrepresented in suspensions, absenteeism, and special education referrals. Although 92.9% of African American black students graduate from IOSD, only 28.5% meet minimum requirements to apply for a University of California or a California State University school. In the 2022 annual survey student self-report, African-American black students perceive school to be less supportive of cultural diversity. One third agree they see their culture represented in school curriculum. African-American black students reported more negative perceptions of academic support and college and career readiness. Bullying and racism is a significant concern for African-American black students with 35% of students indicating an increase in experiences of racism. Here from our Portola students, as well as our IOSD African American Black Community Support Mental Health Specialist, Shalanda Ibrahim Abubakar, to learn more about what it's like being an African American Black student in IOSD and how to create a community of belonging within Portola. Um, hi, I'm Leomi. I'm a senior at Portola. My name is Yusuf Mohammed. I'm a junior here at Portola High School. I'm Serafina, and I'm a senior at Portola. I am Gabriel Mitzvango. I'm a junior at Portola. Being black at ISD sometimes has made me feel quite disconnected from my culture because I grew up in a place with a large black population and a large Nigerian black population in particular because I am part Nigerian and being away from that has made me feel connected because um, before there wasn't really a time where I would look around and I wouldn't see anyone that could relate to one of my experiences. I've already, I've always been in a space where people have been able to comprehend something that I've trying to communicate with them. So um, being separated from that has made me feel sometimes quite isolated. I think being black in IUSD, it's most definitely an experience. Sometimes pleasuring, sometimes like you feel like very discouraged because like it's such a minority here, not only at uh, Portola, but like in uh, Irvine itself. For example, like there's not many people I could talk to about it, but like having like one or two African-American friends at Portola, it like makes me feel like, like comfortable, like heard around them. And in IUSD itself, like Irvine itself, it's like, you have to put on like a different persona and like be someone you aren't just so like you could be looked at as like better or uh, just like someone more like visually appealing, if that makes sense. So like other people can like look at you better so like they could like not only uplift yourself, but like, like the whole African-American community. Being black in ISD is, <clears throat> it's definitely like, I wouldn't say a struggle, but it's it's different because there is such a small population of black students and it's hard when it, you don't have a large community um, to feel like you're included in everything and to feel like you're heard just because there isn't a lot of people to directly support you. Being black at IOSD, I've been in IOSD since third grade and I feel like we've never really, I've never really identified with somebody else on a grand scale. I never really had a black teacher or staff member that I truly identified with. Um, and, I, and I also think like the amount of black people in the district is like very low. So there's no real sense of community. Um, and there are black people, like I have black friends within IOSD and I always have, but it's always been a group of two or three, never really more. So that, that lack of diversity, it kind of like changes like 
how much you identify with yourself as being black too. Um, so yeah. Um, so I'm mixed race. My dad's from Zimbabwe and my mom from the Philippines. Um, I think not having black people around me like really changed how I viewed myself for a while. I didn't really identify with being like black or African-American. I just identified more as like myself, like a student or, you know, I go to this school or like an athlete or whatever. Um, and in my experience in my life, I've experienced more Filipino culture in my life. So I never really got like the chance to understand um, African culture from my dad's side as much. So I identified less with being um, African-American. I am proud of like my culture. Um, I'm Ugandan and my dad was raised in Uganda and moved here to America like when he was 20. And so being Ugandan is a large part of who I am. Um, and my mom is, <clears throat> my mom is African-American. So I feel like I kind of get like two different sides of things because of how strongly I identify with my culture. Um, it has made me like s such a empathetic and caring person just because of the struggles I've had to face. Um, and I, I feel sympathy towards others that have to face them. One thing I love about my ethnicity is how wherever I go, we're always looking out for each other. So I grew up in London and then I moved to Texas and from Texas, I went to New Hampshire and then I came to Irvine. And in each of the places that I've been in, people from my culture and my community have always reached out to me and have always made an attempt to connect with me. So there's never been a time where I've been without people who I can talk to and who can really relate to my experiences. At home, I can most definitely be myself, just like who I am as a like Yusuf. But when I'm outside, like I have to be like 100% at all times, just so like I can be looked at as like like accepted. Of course, like I want to be like like treated the same as like other people. For example, like I don't want to be like treated lower because like of the color of my skin. I don't want to be treated higher because like all the experiences, struggles like I've been through. Like I just want to like be treated like the person next to you. One thing I'd like the Bulldog community to know is that Black people come in so many different forms and a lot of the times people don't recognize that because they get their idea of what a Black person should be from the media or like movies and music. So when they come face to face with someone in this Portola community, they might compare it with what they, with the idea that they have in their head. And oftentimes that can lead to ignorant or harmful comments. So one thing that we should recognize is that black people are really diverse and just as diverse as any other race. And um, this should be a place where all of our personalities can really prosper. My favorite memory of just like the community of black students um, was going to the, or black community was going to the Juneteenth festival because it was just like an Irvine organized event where so many black people came to just celebrate their culture and what makes them them in Irvine. I think recently I'm, I'm just proud that we're able to have like a voice. I think for a while black people have been put down and we've been viewed as like victims for a while. Um, and a lot of people believe that like black people, like we have nothing to do but complain about the problems that we've been given. And I think right now our voices are being heard at a level that we haven't really seen in a while or ever. Um, so I appreciate that on, the, on a grand scale, I appreciate that. But on a smaller scale as a student and as myself, I appreciate other people like me, other black students um, or staff helping us grow as a community. Something I really appreciate is when teachers take time to hear about where I've come from and my backstory. And um, that just makes me feel like they really care about me personally and um, they care enough to make a connection with me. 
in class and honestly it just makes the environment mu a much more inclusive more inclusive and more um it just makes me feel ready to learn and safe in a classroom oh many um it's something that I have faced and I'm sure a lot of us have faced. Um, I think that it comes from a place of ignorance and also the idea that they people can say what they want because there's not enough black students to care. If I'm the only black student in a class and somebody says something, I can't really speak up because I have no support. And I think that in some instances, people take advantage of that, whether it be consciously or unconsciously, they just do it because they know nothing's going to be said. I think it's just some small comments or some, like in conversations, things come up where you could say something that's truly damaging to like the black community or any community for that matter. And people just don't know what it means. And I feel like even telling them, you know, even raising it up and being like, hey, you shouldn't say this, it, it can be sort of awkward to do and to like muster up the courage to do that. It, it, it's very hard because I, you know that there's a chance that they could be like, oh, it's just a joke. I didn't mean it like that. Specific comments I think that are harmful to the black community are like stereotypical ones um, or ones where we are seen like as only like athletes and not like engineers or lawyers or like writers or something. And I think also, especially around times when black people are being celebrated, like we just had Martin Luther King Day, people don't really understand the significance of that. And so they undermine it by saying like, oh, it's just Martin, it's like a free holiday, you know, get a day off, whatever. Um, but when, it's, when in reality, it's much more to that to much more people. A lot of the discrimination that I've seen or have faced has been really um, kind of underhand, like, it's just a comment that slipped through and because I'm the only black person in the space, I'm the only one that realized it and I'm the only one that has to deal with it. So um, most of it is with the use of language or um, perpetuating stereotypes and um, releasing stereotypes onto me or something else. And a lot of the times it's just specific words like misusing the word ghetto for something that's completely just normal or something that um, is really prevalent in black culture. Like it, a lot of the times it makes me think, like I have to be the one to double back and think, okay, was that a dig at someone from my community or was that just a pop culture reference? I feel really celebrated when teachers take the time to um, add representation of black communities inside their lessons. And I remember last year, um, my French class was the only class that did anything for Black History Month. And each week we'd have, we'd focus on a different black person who did something honorable in France or um, was French and there were only three black students in the class, so it wasn't necessary. And I knew that the teacher wasn't doing it because they were obliged to. They just felt like it was something important that people needed to know. And yeah, that made me feel really happy. If you're not too sure about whether something is offensive, maybe you just don't say it or either go on Google and see what other people are saying or ask someone in a uh, really, um, in a way that, and form the question in a way that they'll actually be able to answer and make sure that they know that if they don't want to answer, they don't really need to, because a lot of the times people um, take maybe one black friend and nominate them as an expert on black culture when really they're just trying to live their life. Being around people that celebrate me for being me or other black people for being themselves is truly like, it helps build us up as like people because a lot of times we can be like discouraged or put down by the barrier set upon us. I think just like making an effort as like we've said before, just like 
making like if you don't know much about the topic that we talk about uh, uh, talk about at BSU, making that research is like like just making an effort to like like understand like the adversities that we go through. The best thing that people can do is make an attempt to listen. Um, so when we have meetings uh, for the BSU, like attend them or when we have concerns or we bring something to staff, like listen to what we have to say because it takes a lot of courage for us as a small group to go and make change. And I think that the only way it's gonna happen is if others support us in that. I think our main goal is to just inform people. Um, it's supposed to be a space of learning and community. And even though we don't have a lot of black members, just because there aren't a lot of black students, we still want that sense of community to be implemented. Um, so we welcome all, and it's just a place of learning and growth. I could just like come here, like like unravel all my thoughts, ideas, or uh, like whatever just happened like in my life. Like they could give like their points of view about it and um, how like we could like better ourselves. I'm not gonna lie, when we made the BSU, I had like little faith that people would come and that people would listen. But to see those people coming uh, to the meetings, to see people come back, I think it's really reassuring. So my name is Shalanda Ibrahim Abubakar. I'm a community support mental health specialist for the African American black student population here at Irvine Unified School District. So basically a community support mental health specialist is a linkage between the student and the family, the community, and the school. And in our role, we work to reduce barriers and access to learning for students. Um, and so what that would look like is ensuring that students and families have access to resources within the, the school district and the school community, making sure that the school district um, uses culturally responsive practices that are evidence-based. Bias, right? Bias and lack of understanding of cultural differences and also lack of awareness and understanding about the historical things that have taken place that have led up to where we are now and trying to remove those barriers. Those barriers are not new for black students. It's a continuation of what has been happening over generations. So these things are not unique to Irvine Unified School District. This is a national issue. Well, I think the first step is to understand that African-American Black population is an umbrella. It's not one culture. We are a collection of cultures, right? And so the first thing is not making assumptions about where you think a student may fit, right? And to allow the student to tell you how they identify or ask students questions about what's important to them. You know, it could, it could be the language that they speak. It could be family values, right? Um, I think we should listen more um, and talk less. I also have a web page where I keep resources, community relevant resources up to date. NAACP Youth Council that the youth can, that the students can join if um, they want to be agents of change or social justice warriors, right? They want to put channel that energy. There is um, the Real Talk College Prep um, Program. These things are all linked on my um, webpage. There's also two mentoring programs, one offered by 100 Black Men of Orange County um, called the OC Passport to the Future. Um, and then there's a national coalition for 100 um, Black Women um, Orange County chapter um, that offers a mentoring program for African-American Black high school female students. So there are a few things that we can do. We can focus on building more supportive relationships and connections with African-American Black students. Um, we can also exercise cultural humility. So what that looks like is um, not assuming that you know, right? Or like being competent and it's uh, exercising humility and finding out from the student or letting the student 
tell you how they identify or what is important to them about their culture or even what their culture is. Another thing is to adopt, adopt a strengths-based approach as opposed to a deficit approach. Um, nobody wants to always be told what they don't do right or what they lack, right? Um, then they have this self-fulfilled fulfilled prophecy that I can't do, or they start to internalize this belief of I can't, right? And so if we want to build students up, then we have to seek out their strengths and capitalize on them. Um, the other thing is, I mentioned this before, is representation. It does, it does matter. So we need to make efforts to increase our staffing to make it more reflective of the um, student population and to make sure that um, students see themselves in the curriculum and also not only see themselves, but what matters to them. Um, the other thing is that we have high expectations for our students, but then do we provide the supports for them to meet those expectations? And so if, if, if we want them to meet those expectations, we definitely have to build in those supports so then students feel more, more motivated to learn and then they will excel.